Hey everybody and welcome back. Right well, nothing much happening. Nothing happening on the tree front. I've got about what, four or five phone calls out to tree services. Have for several days. And when you phone them up you get an answering machine. And it always says, you know, we're busy at the moment, blah blah. Please you leave your name and number and we'll call you back. But they never do, which really annoys me. Um, you know, so people say, well, they'll have a lot of work on. Fine, but when they don't have work on and I have work to do, I won't call them. Not if they can't even bother to call me back. Anyway, there's a tiny little rant. Not given to rants. I get annoyed, but I don't rant on because usually it's pretty pointless, isn't it? So, um, just phoned Villiers this morning find out about the piston for the uh, the other greaves <clears throat> and supposedly today's Tuesday supposedly they'd looked at some I guess parcel tracking and he thought they were arriving on Thursday so I said okay I'll call back on Thursday and they do I don't know if I mentioned this I've ordered a, a what's its name one I remember telling you this before because I couldn't remember the name of the pounding, a forged one. Um, but I asked and they do actually have plus 60s of the cast ones. So to be honest, I wish I'd just ordered a cast one. Could have been finished. Can't be that much different, surely. Anyway, that's what's happening there. So what we're going to do is we're going to set to now um, drill out that threaded hole in the right hand fork leg. Get a piece made up, get the wheel put back in the forks, put the forks in the frame and then we'll set to and make up the sleeves, well the bushes for the swinging arm and then we can put the back wheel in, see what size rear suspension units we want, get them ordered. I've ordered tyres, um, the IRC fronts are back in stock so I was able to get a pair of IRCs. So I'll also I'm not going mad with these wheels um you know if i buy a new alloy rim is i think 260 dollars the set of spokes is about a hundred dollars so with shipping um what's that 260 360 that's near enough 400 dollars and that is if i already have a hub so let's say it cost me 50 dollars to f get a hub $450 for a wheel, you know, is just excessive. <laughs> so this time I was going to get new spokes and even there, I'll say they're $100 uh, a set. So I thought, bugger it, the wheels so far have cost me $150 each. The spokes are pretty good. I think a little bit of, um, actually what I'm going to do is bead blast them. With, I'm going to put the old glass bead in, which I was going to throw away because you know the, the bead is round, that's why they call it the bead. But as you smash it into things, it tends to break up and you end up with like glass powder, which isn't very abrasive. But for some light rust removal on the spokes, I'm just going to put the wheel in because I'm going to put new bearings in so it doesn't matter if stuff gets in there. And I'm going to bead blast the spokes and just clean the wheels up. That's going to be enough for this anyway I'm waffling so let's um, get this wheel and fork leg out and see about drilling a hole and making a sleeve all right so here's the setup I used clamped in the vise there blocked it up here got that level then it's clamped down onto the two uh, mudguard mounting ears I've decided to use a 5 8 mil end mill rather than a drill bit so I've got to switch you on of course so I've actually done it all like it only took a few seconds but uh, I put a rod in first of all that was the right size for the the hole while the threads were still there and then that just goes down And there we have our hole so let's take that out of there and do some measurements 
So there it is drilled out or end milled out or whatever you want to call it. So now we've got to take some measurements. So we need three measurements. We need diameter of that. Well actually I suppose you could say we need four measurements. Diameter of that, the depth of this diameter to the other diameter and the total size that I'm going to make it. So let me measure them and do a drawing and then we'll get onto the lathe. Well, that's the two diameters turned down. There's the small diameter for this end. It's a nice tight fit. And then the large diameter for there, which again is a nice tight fit. So all I've got to do now is drill a 12 millimeter hole through it and then part it off. Right, so there's the finished piece. So hopefully that will go in there. And just to there. Didn't need to put down there. Actually, I should could have put it on a bit bigger. But the other space and piece will be one inch. So that's fine. All right. Let's see if things line up. Just taken the hammer over there and have a plastic hammer. And it's out the other side. Hold on a second. Right, I was thinking that I couldn't make that the spacer because it had to fit in. So if I made it the right size for here, I couldn't get it in. But of course, the whole wheel moved the other way on that part of the spindle on the other side. So I think I'll remake this, measure this, make it the full width so I don't have to mess around with spacing pieces. I'll just put that in and it'll go together. As I say, I've got to put, well, I say I've got to put a couple of threads on there. Thick washer would do it, but I might just run another couple of threads down. And before the job's completely completed, because that was such a good tight fit and everything lines up, I'm going to drill this. Actually, I'll probably use an end mill to get it started because the, um, the change in diameter is just here, actually, where that casting mark is. But that's all good, all lined up, everything's fine. Get my little, I don't think you can see this, but I'm using my little space in uh, piece. Yep, we're all spot on. So anyway, it's lunchtime. I'll go and have something to eat. And then we'll come back, make that, and then we're done this side end. Well, drill that hole later on. And we'll get on with the swinging arm. 
Right, well, I didn't make a new piece because when I went to look for a piece of alloy, I found a, I'd drilled a piece for the 12mm and all it needed was facing off. So, we won't go, we won't go mad when we don't need to. Right. Oh, I keep getting spam. Um, I've cut a few more threads on that as well. I've also taken another couple of thou off there because I'm going to give this a coat of paint so it doesn't rust. Right then. That's going to go in there like that, and that's going to I don't know why this gets so tight in there, it's a uh, it turn beautifully. There we go, and that one's going to go on there, I could always weld that to it I suppose at a later point. That all goes to there like that, and Would you believe it? We've got a bigger gap on one side than the other. Oh, hold on, that course. That wants to go in a bit. That's the tight fit there. That's miles out. What's going on? I wonder if this rim is slightly out of true. That's what I'm not going to do though. I'm going to put the pinch bolt in and tighten that up. So let me do that. Okay, I just haven't got everything lined up right there. So that came out fine. Uh, funnily enough, the pinch bolt on the other side, one half of the pinch is threaded and it's 3 8 BSC. So while I was looking for a 3 8 BSC, where did I find in the box of uh, bridge fasteners? Put a big nut with a dimple top and I thought, wait a minute. And sure enough, that is the right bolt to go in the top of there. So I've got to make the thickest washer and then that's set. Alright, let's start doing some measurements for these bushes in the swinging arm. Right, I've got this chopped up at the front so that the wheel spindles 13 inches, which is right, 21 inch wheel with a tire on. But look how high up that is. And also, just looking at that, these things only have about 5 inches of travel. I've got 8 inches there. Well, let's think though, um, ten and a half, that's about two and a half inches of tyre and three, two and a half inches, say another inch for the mud guard, that's three and a half inches. Yeah, that's the same, look, that's eleven, three and a half off eleven is eight. In fact, it's comes to there. I don't need those extensions. I've set this at well, slightly more than 24 degrees. Oh, 
I think I'm going to drop these forks down to what is the top of the fork and see what sort of measurements we get. Charlie Prescott sent me a couple of photographs of a grease with a BSA in it. I think it had, did it have the banana forks? I don't know, I've got to look at some more photographs. What can you see here? Because, for instance, here at the back, we've got about 13 inches again to the wheel spindle, and then Well, the swinging arm is going to be two inches. So, say 15 inches to the bottom of the swinging of the suspension unit, 14 inch. That would be 29. That's 32. So, if I drop that, that would bring that about right for a 14 inch unit. Now, there's the swinging arm. I just had a quick look. Uh, on the BSA engine here, we are six and a half, seven inches between the centre of the sprocket and the bottom of the engine. So the centre of the sprocket is going to be round about here somewhere to get the chain line right. Six and a half inches down from that. The moment you see we've got 20, that would give us 13, now 13 and a half inches of ground clearance around about, which is more than we need. I was looking for it when it's static to be about 12 inches, so it would sag down to 10. So, yes, I'm going to, let me drop these forks and we'll do some more measurements. Hello everyone, it's the next morning, it's pouring down. Uh, I knocked off yesterday because I'd phoned another tree service in the morning. They actually phoned me back and the fella came in the afternoon. So, uh, appearances can be deceiving. I've been looking at things, measuring things. Right, let me tell you. So the first thing I rushed out and measured... Uh, hang on, let me move you very slightly. The ball in the ball joint stuck. Hang on, you might jump. Oh, see? All right. From there to there, obviously with no weight on it at all, is 22 inches. See? 22 inches. From there to there on the bike standing outside is 21 and 3 quarters. So that is right. That's how much space there should be between the bottom yoke and the wheel. So I shouldn't really move that. I've set these now to, I don't know, 24 point something. 24.4. I can live with that. Right, don't forget we're not uh, starting from scratch here, we've got to put up a certain thing. The wheel is 13 inches off the ground, which is where it should be with a tire and everything on. I'll put a swinging arm in. This isn't, of course, exactly right. This is actually going to sit up a little bit more. Put the stand under here which gives us our 13 inches at the back and when I did that actually I am only 15 and a quarter right so we're getting close to being using a 14 inch unit also I looked at the other uh, it was a C15 in a Greaves it did have the banana forks but I noticed that photograph from the other side the gearbox center was about level he had it about level with that and you could see that he even had tubes under the bottom 
and the bash plate on virtually he was up to the level of the wheels so he had about 13 inches of ground clearance now I've forgotten what I measured yesterday so let me measure it again uh, six and a half inches from the gearbox sprocket to basically the bottom of the engine and then we're gonna have a little bit more under that so six and a half inches from about there is to the bottom of this and that's 13 inches so again we're really close I think what we're gonna do is make the bushes for here so that that's in the right place I still don't know about dropping these if I drop these forks down an inch that's gonna if I drop it down that's gonna bring that in a little bit and then I could drop that down a little bit and that would bring the end of the swinging arm up I'm aiming for 14 inches there because 14 inches is the usual length I get and you know you see bikes from the 80s with huge long uh, rear suspension units on because in the 80s everything was about ground clearance keeping your feet up in the air as well so again it's before that change in technique and uh, not just a change in technique I know I'm waffling on a bit but also I think a change in understanding of things like weight distribution and it's like when Chris rides the Triumph that's only got about eight inches of ground clearance he says it's no problem and I've seen him go over huge things just because he uses the suspension and stuff see they weren't they they didn't realize things like that so we're not trying to make it into a modern bike but we are trying to get away from something like say my standard Enfield anyway as I say God you should see the welding on that there um so we're not going to get completely bent out of shape over this until I've got these bushes made and in there and then we can start to see what's what okay so let's continue with these measurements right so I measured on the frame between the two mounting plates I measured from there to there so I know how much of a gap I've got at each side if it's central measured the length of these which are of course slightly different length and I measured the gap from there to there so what we're going to do and I measured the IDs of these of course so we're going to make up two bushes and what I'm going to do with them so that they have thrust faces the gap at the sides is 0.156 so I will make the bush with a flange at the end and then that will be our thrust end for this then what I'm going to do is make it stick out a bit here say an eighth of an inch here and I'm going to make an eighth inch thrust washer basically out of the plastic and it will go onto that so we'll have thrust faces at each side then when that's in the swinging arm I can measure this mountain that's in the center that's bolt that's welded to the frame and we're going to make up two alloy spacing pieces for there we're going to make them out of alloy they're going to be really thick because I'm going to use exactly the same method that Greaves used for the rear mounting plates now the Greaves that cradle was actually welded to these spacing pieces so the one thing went right through so we're going to do exactly the same so I'm making them out of alloy so I can weld them to the quarter inch alloy plate that I make the rear engine mounting out of all right so first of all I've got to turn up these two bushes as I say with the little flange the extra bit of weight and then turn up two uh, 
thrust faces, two thrust washers. All right. So I've turned this down to be a tight fit into the swinging arm and it's the right length to be the size of the mountain plus that eighth. I've drilled it, now I'm taking it out to the exact right size for the pivot to go through and then we'll put the uh, cut off tool on and do this 150 thou thick and then that will go in from the outside so let me get on with that. Right, I've got that done. This is a nice, just nice fit in that. That's why I uh, bought it rather than relying on a drill. So now I've set the cutoff tool in, and that's a hundred. I'm, I'm cutting it 150. The gap is 156, but I'll cut it at that. We can always get a very a, a shim and put it in there. I think I did that with the Triumph, uh, with the Otter frame. I made this, because you can never tell there's little vagaries in, and then I was out by a few thou, so I got an appropriate size shim, and I actually glued it to the mounting on the frame, so that that fitted in nicely. Okay, so let's see. We'll get very brave, and I'll let you watch me using the cutoff tool, since it's only plastic. I've got it set that I think it's 200 RPM or panel. It's over there and then slow. 120. Oh well, this will take ages for you to watch, but there you go. You've got nothing better to do, have you? It's going in pretty quickly. Doesn't have a long way to go. And as I said, I've made this length with an extra eighth inch so we can make another flange like that. I could have made these in two halves, but then, you know, I'm doubling the risk of not doing it quite right. They'd have to line up like doing a tunnel and digging from both ends you've got to meet in the middle can't be far off So there's our piece made, let me just get this end off and we'll see how it fits. Alright, so there's that made, that's going to go in there and this is a really nice fit in that beautiful sliding fit so it won't, won't fall out. So what we need to know now is just how much I've, did I get my eighth? Yeah, I'd say that was, yeah, that's spot on an eighth. So what I'm going to do now is just put that back in, put the blank in. Hang on, hang on, don't go away. Oh, just poked myself in the back with the blooming thing on the cross slide. All right, so we'll put this in. We're going to drill it and then bore it to the full length, about two inches, and then I'll take an eighth. Well, then I'll have to bore in an eighth a bit further, and then we'll cut that off. Right, so, there's that bit made, and say, there's the other bit, so that, so he's going to stick through there. That goes on there. And that will be like that. Okay, so let's go and press this one in and see if it works. Well, as you can 
here it's raining again. In fact, I've had to wait for about 10 minutes. It was absolutely pouring down. Another big storm. Okay. And there it is with the other piece pressed on there. So all we've got to do is make one for the other or make two pieces for the other side. And here comes the rain again. Good morning. Well, after I mentioned that I, it was raining in the last little bit of video, it got heavier and heavier and then pfft, power went off. So I came to a complete standstill yesterday. Power was off for a long time. Luckily, we bought a generator and had it wired so that we just switched it on and switched over some things in the house and everything ran. But I've come out this morning to finish off the second bush and I thought, oh, let me just put the uh, pivot through the first bush and as I've been talking you've been looking at that and thinking wait a minute that doesn't look right you're exactly right look at that Actually, let me move that over a little bit to show you it's completely out of line those two are completely out of line so I don't know that water in there burst in the seam and stuff it must have oh that doesn't look bent does it see that isn't no that isn't bent oh god what to do what to do <laughs> the only thing I can think of doing is to cut through that and then bend it and then weld it up again. Oh man. Everything was going so well. All right, let me give this some thought. All right, oops, I've had a piece of licorice which always helps my brain functions. What I'm thinking is, seeing as this is actually welded up here, I'm going to make the other bush. I'm going to cut that through there. We'll cut three sides, this side, the back side, and this front side. And then... yeah I can if I cut piece out so that that will go that way then as that goes that way this will come this way and when I've got it nicely lined up through the bushes we'll weld up the front part and then we'll weld up the rest of it this is weirdly weird all right let me finish making the other bush and then uh We'll cut that with a cutting disc rather than a hacksaw and that will give me a, a, a wide enough, is that the kerf, is that what they call it? Wide enough gap, I think, for that to move over and then we'll weld it up. All right. Now I know your minds often work the same way as mine do and that after I've shown you something we both start thinking about it so my first thought was oh have I bored this not concentric well by that 
that's perfect but just to be on the safe side look what I'm going to do I don't know if I can do this without I don't know if you'll be able to read this That's 12, 30 seconds. 12, 30 seconds. So it is exactly true with that. So I've made the other bush and put it in. And you can see here how it's out that way. But the top edge is right and the bottom edge is right. So it is only in this plane that it's got to move so all I've got to do let's think it's in this plane it's got to move there's a big lorry so yeah if I can move that down that'll be right so let me get a cutting disc cut into cut that all the way around and see if we can get this lined up well I think I need to take another long break. I turned this around to make it easier to cut and look I've cut the wrong bloody side. And it's bronzed for one thing and this is really thin. Couldn't believe how quickly the cutting disc went through. Now we're sort of we're straight but we're high. So, you can't see it. Hold on. So, what I'm going to do is put a piece of 516th through here to keep this end right. See, that moves. Uh, I'll try and get it all held together. I might have to cut through this a little bit. can't believe just getting some water in there mind you it's maybe when I've tried to straighten everything out anyway let me press on with this now then I fiddled and twiddled with this but I could not get this to go in and be able to turn it so that's set up so I, I just cut it off that's all I could do so that's through there nicely in line the wheel spindle is half inch, so I've got a piece of half inch in. It's all set up, that's through there, so everything's held in position. This was all bronzed together, so I'll have to bronze it again. And you know, not all bronzers are the same. This is a very yellow one, it's a very brassy looking one. So we'll see what I can do. I don't want to have to gas bronze it because. You know all that heat is maybe going to twist it again and uh, I can't really weld it up with these bushes in place with them being plastic bushes so what I've got to do is get it bronzed up enough so that it's rigid then I take the bushes out and uh, finish doing it but at the moment anyway that that turns as I said that was a nice close fit in there so that's that's fine let me see if I can bronze this up and I think probably what I'll have to do is uh, put some strengthening pieces on. Going to look a bit silly but nothing else I can do. Alright. Now I've got that bronzed. Keep it in shot here all the way around. And there. I've done half of it in there. What I've done is as I've bronzed it, I've done a little bit and then I've blown it and blown it and blown it and kept this all cool. So anyway, that is done and uh, we're all right with that. Okay. 
job saved uh, I might put a little couple of strengthening pieces in the corners like that we'll see later on but for now let's go and put this in the frame and that is a real struggle believe me now then as I said this is a struggle these plates this one is that one is slightly on the inside of the tube so there's less space here than there is there and on this side this thing for the cable for the rear brake cable means you can't drop it in top ways um, when I was putting this in before it was an absolute nightmare to get it in Just to prove me a liar, look. Oh, I left the thing over there. God, it took me ages to get that in when I was doing measurements. Can't get over that. Okay. Why, when you're just right close to something and you just tap it, does it always shoot past? Well, as I say, job saved. Now, as I mentioned, I've left this a little bit. I can always put a shim in, but if I'd have made that exact, I don't think I'd have ever got it in. All right. So, let me see about um, putting the back wheel in. Now it just so happens that the uh, longer units from the front of the banana forks are 14 inch. So we're going to use one of these to make things go right. Not on, just so they don't accidentally drop out. And let's see what we are here. Fifteen and a half. See, we're two and a half inches up from where we want to be which isn't good all right let me find the wheel now this swinging arm is in a terrible state unless I no I can speak with them right there the wheel spindle is nine and a quarter inches both sides measure to these from the down and then about a half an inch difference and you can see it actually when I stand back the wheel is vertical the wheels vertical and the bikes over like that can we flame straighten this this side's high I heat, no, heat that there, get that to bend up a bit and heat the other one on the other side and get it to bend a little bit the other way. I mean you can't see anything and when it was laid on the bench it looked fine but as soon as I put the wheel in I had the bike vertical and I put the wheel in and the wheels canted over and I thought uh oh. This is getting to be really annoying, isn't it? Hmm. All right, bear with me here on the focus. That's a lot of depth of field to have it in focus all the way along. All right, it's standing on 
one two three blocks so it's three inches there each side so that's exactly right I've just measured the height of this it's four and a quarter inches both sides so that's not wrong but here we are well let's measure to that rather than the bolt shall we to the end of there it is three and eleven sixteenths and to there it is three and a half three sixteenths that way now then I wonder if it could be when I repaired, probably when I repaired and welded that, I've uh, got some twist in it. So, what I need to do is drop that 3 sixteenths. And I'm thinking of that because on this side I'll probably be putting, well I'll be putting a prop stand on that side. A chain tension of the side all I'm thinking is both of them are going to have plates mounting plates so I can use the mounting plates as a, a bridge as a strengthener across the weld so where did I say that side is low which would mean cutting down so the joint would be on the top which is no good for strengthening it with the uh, prop stand because that would be at the bottom but here if I'm going to have a chain tensioner on or I can even put the prop stand this side as well that would be right I'd make the cut into the bottom cut a little uh, V out and pull that end down slightly I think that's what I'm going to do by the time I've finished I could have made a new bloody swinging arm couldn't I instead of trying to repair it I think that's what's done that created the problem all right let me cut this right well we deserve a bit of luck cut through there we're back on our one two three blocks you watch this will change now so the bottom of there look is three nine sixteenths three and nine sixteenths zero 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 oh come on I just did it now it's reading point three look Come on, stop messing about. Let's try leaning that against there. Zero, zero, zero. All right. So now all I've got to do is weld that up so that it doesn't go bionk. Right. Let me see if I can get some tacks on this so it doesn't move. Again, can't keep you all completely in focus, but I think you'll see that that's horizontal, that's vertical. So it all welded up nicely. Let's hope we can just keep it like that. All right, uh, that's going to be all for this week. Um, I'd like to get the wheels done and get the tyres on next week so we can have the bike standing properly and then we'll see what's what. Um, how far out are we with these? See we're not far out. That being a 13. We're only, I don't know less than an inch so 
got a feeling if I drop them down an inch or thereabouts, the forks I'm talking about, we should be good. All right, lots of stuff to do next week. Anyway, we've got to get all this finished off, make the mountains up here and do all that sort of stuff. Make a wheel spindle. Actually, that's 14 millimeter. That's the right size for the bearings in the wheel. It's nicely long enough. This though is only about 12 and a half mil. So what we'll do is we'll mill some flats on it so it slips in. And that'll solve that problem. All right, so until next week, when I will be a year older, you stay safe and enjoy yourselves.